Right guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel. We're at the Regal Gentleman studio today and we've got Michael in the chair. How are you, Michael? I'm good, thanks. You good? Yeah. Awesome. So what are we doing, mate? What's the plan? Um, well, I've not had cut for four months. Uh, okay. It's, it's dead thick, which I, I like. I hate the back and sides. It's just way, way, way too okay. And I'd like it squared off. Mm -hmm. um, I like it a bit longer on top now and I tend to bleach it a bit. So oh, do you? I'll okay, cool. like some bleach slices in the front of it. Okay, cool, cool. So, and how are you wearing it? Are you wearing it with the off centre no, part? And no. no, this is just because it's grown so much, you know? I right, know. okay, okay. So let's establish what we want to do with the top first. So how do you want to style your hair? Um, I want to keep it, well, I don't mind it sort of going over a bit, but we need yeah. a definite part in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so quite like sort of lived in on the top, quite loose, just be able to brush it, yeah. brush it off your face and let it fall naturally. Yeah. That kind of thing, yeah. Okay, that's cool. I mean, the thing is why the parting is so heavy is because it's kind of where your natural parting is, but also your hair is very short around that parting as well. So it's, it, it's fallen a bit easier into your natural parting this way. So once the back and sides are shorter and we can work through the top, we can, I, de I definitely think we can get some razor work in there to try and force it different ways. So if you just run your hands through your hair, it just falls back mm -hmm. and you can leave it to be quite natural. If that's the look you're trying to achieve, something that's really easy, no, no particular part that just pushed off your face. Is that what you're looking to do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. something like that, yeah? yeah. Okay, cool. But and then- it's like this. Yeah, it's big, and isn't I've it? I've got a neck whirl here, so the back's all... That's all right. They're, they're, not too, they're not too hard to deal with if you're going shorter. If you're leaving them longer, it can be quite hard, but... Yeah, just through there, you've got one. But what are you thinking to do with the back and sides? How short do you want to go? As short as you can, basically. I can go as short as you like. What, what would you prefer? Square. I mean, I have photographs and how I used to have it, but I don't know if that's going to help or not. Not necessarily, because we're wearing the top longer, okay. so it won't really make too much of a difference, right. to be honest. I think it's better to work with what you've got now more than older photos. That's just me personally. Um, I just prefer it that way. Um, but I mean, we can go with short. You want square? When we cut it square, I always tend to cut square unless I'm doing something that needs to be rounded off. So it doesn't really matter how short we go. It's just entirely up to you because we can, as long as we can connect the top, yeah. you can go as short as you like. Yeah. It's entirely up to you. Okay, I mean, you can do that maybe in mid -fade. Yeah. Do you want to go down to, do you want to go down to skin or do you want to yeah, go? Yeah, you can go up to skin. I yeah. don't mind at all. Okay, that's cool. All right. Okay, cool. Right, well, um, we'll get you washed and conditioned and we'll get you started. All right, buddy? Cool. Cheers, mate. All right, guys, so we've just um, shampooed and conditioned uh, Michael's hair. Now, you'll really start to see the length in the top when it's wet, because I felt it looked quite short when he came in through the top. And that's why I think it was so prominent in the parting, because um, it was just sort of falling in, in his natural parting. But now it's wet, you can see, it does move around different ways. If I just turn this camera, Michael, you'll be able to see what I mean. So you see when it's a bit longer, a bit wetter, you can see it does move around. So that indicates that I can definitely work with that. Um, maybe it was the way it was dried naturally today. Maybe it was the way you dried it this morning. I don't know. That's why it's always good to wet it down or wash it first because you get, the, you get the sense of how it will naturally fall, not necessarily how it's fell when they've woken up or if they've styled it themselves. And maybe they might not made, they might have slipped the mind that they put some product in. You never know. So I can always tell, especially when it's a bit wet, it adds a little bit of elasticity to it as well, but I can definitely work the razor through that or at least slide cut through that if you don't have a razor at home, for example, to make that fall differently. Because I just want to make it really easy for Michael to style because he wants to leave a bit more length and he doesn't want a, an exact part. And, but I think for the shape that we're going to go for as well, I think working down to a fade from about this point, as we take these corners out, you, you don't want it to sit too much in a heavy part because it would be too square, I think, especially if we keep keeping more length. So by working it just loosely so it can fall either way, it allows us to get rid of the corner here to create a bit more of a square finish, a bit more. So it sits a bit like that. First of all, I'm going to horseshoe section. I'm going to start working on the fade. I'm going to dry off the back and sides. I'm going to start the clipper work first. So I'm just going to finger dry the hair. If you look at Michael's hair as well, while it is sort of drier through the sides here, where it starts to dry off, it does want to come back like that, which is good because I think if Michael decides to push his hair back, as long as there's enough length through this blend here, through this corner, we can allow him to still work his hair back, which I think will look really nice, to be fair. But I think just having that option to do that is the key point of this particular haircut, because I, even though he's keeping length on the top, it's gonna to be new to him. He's had a four month wait for a haircut because of the lockdown in the UK, but also it's a different style thing. So I wanna make sure that this style is easy. We talk about autopilot in some of the videos as well. Michael showed me his autopilot when he came in this morning. He just did this, he does this a lot. That was the autopilot for him at that length. So taking that into account of how he styles his hair every morning, how he, his first go-to sort of thing with his hands is either to go from like sort of off the center there to the left and then to the right. 
I'm going to try and break that autopilot for him today by talking to him about how to change his autopilot, but also how, if he still wants to do that, it's still acceptable and it'll still work within the haircut as well. So I want to still make sure that what he does normally every single day is still going to work on the finish look, but also help him change it around a little bit as well. Not looking to give him a style that's going to be really hard to work with. And I think that's the key for this, this sort of post pandemic haircuts or post lockdown trims is that a lot of people go for very, very hard to work styles. And most of the guys who sat in my chair lately have all said they don't even own a hairdryer. Which I was quite surprised with. You own a hairdryer, I'm sure, yeah. Liam, you own a hairdryer, yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of guys out there who do own a hairdryer, but there's a lot who still don't. So they're the things I, I'm also trying to take into account now, post lockdown. Now, Michael isn't a hairdresser and she's so it's a bit different. He's, he's got a bit more knowledge about hairdryers and things like that. But, you know, we're talking to everybody, right? So if you don't own a hairdryer or if, you do, or if you've, you've been planning on owning a hairdryer, don't go for a style that's going to require you to use a brush. It's going to require you to do a lot of blow drying because you're just going to get stuck and you're going to hate it and you'll probably end up going back to something that you may not have suited or that might have been a bit too short whereas the barber who's done your hair is giving you the style for a reason i think the reality is just explain to the barber you don't own a hairdryer and if you and if you want to learn you can do classes like we we, we can always spend you know five minutes at the end just showing you how to use a brush you know if, if you didn't know or if anyone out there doesn't know how to use a hairdryer you know you can spend time with your barber just take in what he does film him film what he does or just ask him to film it himself for him just so he gets the idea of how to style the new look there we go that's all dried off now so because we're going to do that kind of mid fade on the sides of the back i'm going to work it for what we say when we say mid it doesn't it's not mid on everybody at the same height as everybody as we've seen at the start when we hold the comb on the side of Michael's face, we've got to have the blend fairly mid to low, I would say, right? So where that blend needs to come off to leave the length is roughly, I would say, a zero shouldn't go any higher than there, I would say. Now, that is probably classed as a low fade, but a mid fade wouldn't work with the top. So we'll explain that to you now. I'd probably work it a little bit lower than too high, okay? Just because we compromise length through here which then we'd lose the squareness too much, all right? And especially if you want to leave length on top, it might it might compromise the length on the top, all right? So if you're happy to go a little bit lower, would that be okay? Yeah, fine. Awesome, there we go. Right, so I'm starting with my number two guard, lever down, and I'm gonna remove all the length down the bottom as well, okay? And I'm working up and off. Now I will take some length off through here as well, but just for now, by working off the bone, it just allows me to create that shape that I want to work up and around into the crown. I'm pulling up and off. Nothing too really heavy. I don't want to make it harder for myself to blend out. I'm trying to make it easy for myself. Again, these techniques work really well if you're in a very busy barber shop because that's how. That's where I let my trade was in a, a walk-in barbershop and you know, you'd have a four, four hour queue on a Saturday and you, you just know a client walks in at five o'clock, you know you're cutting the hair at seven and you know your day is not going to finish till you finish them. So I think working with anything that is going to make your life a bit easier, technique wise, blending wise, fading wise, especially when you work in a busy barbershop, as long as the fade comes out looking nice, doesn't matter how you do it, but I think speed is of the essence as well. So obviously we're, we do it quite slow in, this, in our videos because we're doing we are doing tutorials, so they're not meant to be quick. That's why we talk a lot and, um, and stop a lot for that reason. But the reality is in a shop, if I was doing this and I worked in a, you know, say a, a, a local barber shop, which is the only one on the high street and it was the busiest one, you'd be doing this kind of haircut in about, you know, you'd be aiming to try to do it in about 25 minutes through techniques that we have given, you know, through, through the videos, through the techniques that I've learned as well. You see, I'm working up and off. And as you see, I'm not working that kind of, I'm not creating a really heavy line. Okay, I'm just using, you anchor it, you pivot it and you suspend and you come up and off. That's what creates a nice sort of shallow line, nothing too really heavy. Two and a half done. Onto my two now, a little bit lower now to about here. And again, just doing that kind of scooping motion. You hear the hair coming off. You're not looking to remove loads of hair because we've already done two and a half. We're just looking to start this transition this descend and blend that we're looking for. I'm just working very, very shallow sort of blending. 
At the back again, working up and off now. So two and a half, two, one and a half, extra point here like that. And what you start to see is a nice transition from the two and a half, two into the one and a half. So this method works great. Very speedy method, reducing loads of bulk and loads of hair, but creating a very nice, perfect blend as well. Okay, I'm going to go on to my own number one now. Same starting point, I'm coming up and off. Like so, so I'm getting a very nice blend coming through from the one and a half into the one, then going up into the two and the two and a half. And just flip down the lever to the one and a half and just going over while I'm here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my zero line in. Okay, so I've descended everything so far up into the one. Now I'm going to put my zero line in and work on the minis and the foilers just to get right down to the bone. But then I'm going to use the half to blend up and then use the guards as well, the half guard and the one and a half guard. The reason why I'm putting a line in with the zero is because the hair is light. I want to see where my line is perfectly. If you don't put the line in, it can be quite hard to see. Again, the back, you can take it bit higher up because you've got such a wide blending point. It's just the sides you've got to be careful of. So I'm going to sort of halfway up here, just before, so I know I can still edge that out there. Like I said, the point of reference we spoke about before. So I'm working too as well. I'm just following it around the ear in the same arch. Size a little bit down on the right side, go a bit higher up. It's always good just to do that before you start again with the mini clippers because one side is going to be lower and you want to get that symmetry in both sides. So when the client looks straight on, the blend looks flawless both sides, not just on one side, it looks a bit too high on one side. And that's sometimes why you can get weight a bit longer at the top just because you've dropped the blend a little bit too low on one side. So I'm moving on to my mini clippers now or the trimmers, whichever way or whichever term you want to use. And I'm just going to start to strengthen up the hairline now. While I'm here, I'm just strengthen up the temple. And again, when we're doing a fade like this, just strengthening that temple is really nice. It just makes the fade pop a little bit more. So again, not, not cutting into the hairline too much. I'm just making sure the length through here, I'm going to still leave that same length. And then you just edge it off. So you're making it even. And then you can remove the length. Pull the mask down if you need to. And wake up and off. I'm just working up and off into that zero. So I'm not going up to the line, just stopping just before the line. Just again, the same scoop of motion, just to make sure we don't leave a line with these trimmers because they are very, very close. I'm going to move on to my shavers now. I'm just working and coming off of where the mini's finished as well. Just around the edges, doesn't need to be too much. On my 0.5, I'm working up and off. I'm keeping this blend nice and shallow, so pulling off a little bit sooner. If I was stretching the blend, I'd be going up and off to probably about here, but I'm dropping it a bit lower down. I'm just going to work through the lever now, in the same place I'm at, to make it seamless in the same amount of time. I'm going to take it down to zero and then wake up and off. Same again this side. Up and off. Now this is where it can be a bit more tricky. So just place it on the line and flick it out. Just try not to go into this bit here, okay? And just working through the lever. Like that. Going back down the lever again just to go a bit dark a bit with my corner of my clipper. Like so. Up and off. Like so. A shallow blade, is, a shallow blend, sorry, is very, very effective because it just blends out into nothing.
I've got a nice area to focus on now. So my blending of my two into my zero is done, okay? I've used the foils, I've used the minis, I've taped up, taped up the uh, temple as well. That's all done now. All I'm gonna do is refine it and blend it, okay? Start at the blend, bringing my teeth towards me slightly because I'm still wanna maintain some weight. And I could work slowly, turning the teeth of my comb more towards the ceiling the higher I go up, okay? Like so. And that blends it in nicely. Or you can start from the top, teeth towards the ceiling, and the teeth get more and more towards you, the lower down in sections you go. Okay, and do both. Whatever you feel most comfortable when working on a, on a, on a occipital bone, something like this, where it protrudes more out if you leave it too short or you go too high. If you look from this angle now, that's sitting really nice and lean into the neckline. As you can see. You see, I'm not taking loads of length off, I'm still leaving some length to that corner. That's what's going to create that really square effect for Michael. And also allow me to transition what length we're leaving on top into the sides and the back. Knee down, flat on the comb. Up and off. Here we go. Now, if I look in the mirror now, obviously we're going to work over that, I'm going to connect the top in, but that, when that's styled, that will create a very square shape for my comb. So I'm just going to work over now some clipper over comb. I want to size one comb now, okay, as well. So I'm going over the blending of this to keep that weight through here. As you can see, it's blending right down. Turn around to the sort of small teeth. And just go over that blend if you need to. Just to cross check and double check and as many checks as you can just to make sure that's all blended in. So, gonna start by blending in the top now. So using my all-purpose cutting combs, my longer cutting comb that I tend to use when I'm sectioning. I'm using the small teeth to take me section, and I'm going just above the recession, just above the round of the head, like so. So I'm gonna pull this out towards me and drop it down ever so slightly, okay? And that'll create a very nice screen. So I let that go, if we cut at this point here, it's be cutting towards the top of the blend point but it'll still create a very nice square shape in it as well. Out towards me, straight across. So that's just sitting on the corner. So as it dries off, that'll create a very nice square shape, but also there's enough length in there to be able to transition into the top as well. Get another section, keeping it fairly thin, I'd say maybe a quarter of an inch wide. Pull that out and there's my guide. There's your guide you're working to, pull it out. Again, I've got a little bit of tension on the hair, but not enough that I'm going to stretch it too much. Just enough that I can grip in my hands. I'll let it go a little bit. Not working around the head just yet, I'm just working right out. So as you can see, look at that. That's fallen back nicely. So I know that'll look nice from the side. It'll look nice going back, and it's still creating a very nice shape. Just one section now before the center. This is the section that is probably much really strong for Michael, this, uh, this sort of off-center parting. But I don't want him to have that all the time. I want to have the option to have that if you want to. So that's hence why I'm connecting both sides in. So I think it just past the center. If you take it on the center, you're gonna encourage a center part, okay? Take it just past the center when you work the other side as well. You're not actually cutting it dead on the center. Just cross-check anyway. Move bits that maybe I think could do with a little slight trimming, just to smoothen off the edges. But again, nothing's coming off. You can see. As you can see now, it just falls nice and easy. It falls over, it falls back. Now we're gonna work on the other side now. And same thing again. Pulling it out towards me, a little slight dip. Just pulling this out, like so. Same again, nice thin section from the front to the back. Find the guide, there we go. 
on the right hand side and from underneath to match up. Section gym just before the centre. And just pulling it straight out with a slight dip. And this is slightly just to keep that length in that corner. Now, last section, just past the centre. Again, I'm just mirroring what we did the other side now. Now, there we go. Nothing's coming off. Nothing's coming off. Anything going to come off the fringe? Probably not. No. So, going to comb this all back now. I know, obviously, we did horizontal sections through the sides. We get to the crown, I'm going to do vertical sections, okay? I'm just going to work from that blending point. Now, nothing may come off just yet, but I'm dropping it down, okay? And that's the crown is disconnected to the back, see? I'm going to mirror the blending point so your fingers are getting lower as you get down. There isn't much coming off at all. There we go. Now through the top, I'm just going to work through the middle section now, just to make sure the ends are okay. And I might just point cut into them a little bit, just to break it up a little bit. And again, too much weight in there will make it sit flat. We don't need it, we've created that shape already anyway. For the profile, we've cut into that little bit there. I want to create some nice texture, nice movement in this, okay? So I'm going to just take a section just off centre, like so. And I'm going to work horizontally. I'm going to work with this razor from the mid to the ends. I'm just going to work into it now. Again, I'm not taking enough off that's going to spike out anywhere. I'm going to just take maybe like three or four slides through the hair. Okay, very acute angle as well. Nothing too harsh. Not looking to make the, the, the hair underneath here stand out and stick out. If you were doing that with a thinning scissor, for example, and you're working through, you'd be cutting layers upon layers of short hair. That would tend to, when it grows out, especially if you work the thinning scissor along this corner here, it grows out wild. Off centre again. Again, not trying to encourage a centre part or anything. I'm just going to slide in. Taking very wide sections and just being very sporadic. Sections don't have to be perfect, remember? We're only adding texture. We're adding a secondary shape, so it doesn't have to be too perfect. As you can see, that starts to fall around quite nicely now. Like so. I'm just slide in, as you see, from halfway up to my fingers. Like that. And now that will just encourage it to grow, to, to, sorry, to style that way, and to style back as well. And the last bit I'm going to do is just add a little bit of lift through this as well. Just add a bit of height, just for, just to get, again, just to give Michael an option. Starting here, just going from the middle up. Up and out. Now I'm going to add a little bit of collapse in here now as well. So going at the very root and just working up. That's going to help the hair fall a bit flatter. So again, just trying to give as many options as possible. One last one before the front, a little bit of height in the fringe from I think would be quite nice. And that's all we need for now. So nice and easy, no maintenance, high heat, high speed, start the front, to dry off the hair. Just trying it every which way I can. Right to left, left to right, back. Before we do any stand, before I check up my mic, it's all right, I'm just going to cut into this bit here. Because obviously when you're working horizontally and you're cutting club cut or blunt cut, whatever you want to say, it can sometimes leave a bit more weight and a bit of a weight line. So a good little thing to do when it's dry is just comb the hair out. Bring it in a horizontal section and just bring it upwards like that. Okay, so you're taking it away from removing length and just go straight in like so. What you do is you're just breaking up that line as it sits heavy. It just adds a little bit of a blend to it. Again, you could pop a thin scissor over this, but I just find you just be spoken a little bit more to the client. Like so. And just takes out that bluntness and just thins it out slightly as well. Once you remove thickness, it goes straight in with your scissor. You can see the finish is there. That creates a softer landing as it falls down. Okay. Work all the way around the head doing this. Even at the crown. Remember, if you pull it outwards, it's not going to work the same. If you lift it up, elevate it. As it drops, it sits a lot 
more natural into the blending point. Lift it up. Just break up that, there like that. Just going over that clipper work with a size five comb now. This is like my kind of cutting comb. We're doing scissor over comb with this. Just perfecting up the, the edges with the scissors. How's that looking for you, Michael? Great. Happy, yeah? Mm -hmm. Awesome. There we go. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Happy, yeah? Great. Awesome. Thank you very much, Michael. Cheers, mate. Thank you.